so of course it is that time of year on our show right now. I'm on the internet. And I have I have to admit this year's round is not quite so bad. Mainly because this year's Black Friday was down uh, according to reports 11% across because the board. Because all the asshole stores decided to open on Thanksgiving. Yeah. But who needs a day off ever? But even still, even factoring that in, sales are down seven percent this year. I know, baby. I'm I'm on the internet right now. You put the ball under my chair. I can't get it. I'm yeah. sorry. This is a trend I hope continues because fuck Black Friday. Yeah. Still, we do have Black Friday stories. Oh yes. Let us begin. Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air audience, go out and worldwide interwebs, finds all sorts of horrible stuff, brings back here for a little bit. We like to call, what the fuck is wrong with you? Hey, Alex. <laughs> I'm crazy. No biting, that's not nice. Is that turkey? Is your hand turkey? My hand is not turkey. My hand is turkey. Say hello, Internet. I was very grumpy last week, but today I'm very happy. <laughs> So, I'm purring. I don't know if you can hear me. A little bit. A little tiny bit. So first off, we have the Around the Country rundown. Black Did you Friday. See, I sent you a thing. Where's the thing? What thing I texted you? it to you. Oh, it, well, that's not going to show up on my computer now, is it? Because you texted it. I put it on Twitter, too. Okay, well, that's different. Oh, well, I'll get my screen out of your face. Let's see where it is. Sorry. Sorry, everybody. Sorry. Professional. Sorry. Let's see. That what, one's on me. What did you put on the... Okay. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, we're not doing that. That's, no? That's a little too far. Isn't that what we do? We're not doing that one. Too far is kind of our oeuvre. Maybe. I'll think about it. any event, let's get to the Black Friday stuff. Stores open their doors around 6 p.m. Thursday. As the day of consumerism has leaked into Thanksgiving, police lined up for uh, people lined up for hours to get their hands on discounted goods, at times fighting over some of the best deals. Um... One video taken at a Houston, Texas Walmart show, store shows shoppers diving protectively on top of discount Samsung flat screen TVs, clawing at each other over the discounted big screens before the store security and armed police officers break up the mob. Did you hear that Black Friday is becoming a thing in England? Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. We'll oh, get there. We'll get sorry. There. Okay, first off, I assume before they walk into the store, these are rational, functional human beings. No. <laughs> that's, that's your first mistake. That's, that's my first incorrect assumption. So they wake up that morning going, I'm going to get me a big screen, and if I don't, somebody going to die. Yep. And you know the thing about Black Friday is half these stores, like, they're only obligated to stock one to claim the deal. Yeah. So a lot of these stores stock like two of that item and, and it's gone. And you know what? They, they know the people, the executives, they know this. I'm fully convinced that they, they get their entertainment from watching p the people who have less money than them scramble and claw one each other for consumer goods. I think they're just sitting back and laughing. It's kind of like the Hunger Games. It is. Holy shit. You cracked the code. Holy shit, Black Friday is our Hunger game. Dude, this my mind is blown! And it's funny that, like, we're such fucking idiots, Americans, yes, because we, we spend a whole day expressing thanks for all that we have, and then we go out and kick the shit out of each other to get just a little bit more at a discount price. At a Michigan City, Indianapolis, Walmart, a couple donning Chicago Bears jerseys ripped a set of Sony speakers out of another shopper's hands, 
Hurling expletives as the man whipped the box around, nearly bashing a scooter-bound man in the face with the package. If you are about to injure the, the handicapped without a second thought, you, you got no place among us. I'm at the point where I feel like going to a Walmart on Black Friday is actually dumber than going to the running of the bolts. Shit, yeah! Like, I would sooner go to Spain and be chased by actual wild animals and here's, than go to a fucking Walmart on Black Friday. Here's, here's, here's what blows my mind worse. These speakers and these TVs, you are likely going to be able to find them online for maybe $10, $20 more. You're not getting the super deal you think you're getting. Well, it, like Cyber Monday, that's not even a thing anymore because people start. I was getting Black Friday emails about online deals last week. Like, yeah, I was getting. There waiting. really is no Black Friday anymore. There really is no Cyber Monday. It's a week long sale yeah. orgy. Yeah, and, but you know the difference is. And the thing is, they're not even making money being open on Thanksgiving. Two years in a row now, it's been proven that it's not making them money. But they're yeah. going to keep doing it. Well, hopefully they'll just run out of money. That would be good. Um, we've got a more specific one that just made me kind of say, I think this is sort of like a King Solomon sort of deal coming to us from Los Angeles. Oh, fucking California. Two women fight at a Norwalk Walmart... Over Barbie doll. Authority said two women got into a pushing and shoving match with at least one of them reportedly throwing a punch over a Barbie doll on Thanksgiving evening. Sheriff Deputy had to be called to the Walmart store after reports the fight broke out. Was it an especially rare Barbie doll? I don't know. Or was it just a fucking Barbie doll? Because there's going to be more of those. There are going to be, there, I, I goddamn promise you. And Barbie dolls aren't that expensive anyway. Like, unless you're getting one of the collector's edition ones, they're like $15, $18 for and you, Barbie. You know, if I was the store manager, I'd go over to housewares, I'd come back with a really big carving knife, and, I go, and I'll go, I can solve this! And find out who really loved the Barbie doll. We'll find out who really loves Barbie. I'm so, it, it was just, it was there, and I had to take it. I keep telling my nephew, if he doesn't get me his Christmas list soon, I'm just going to get him extra itchy underwear and a Barbie. He's like, no, I don't want a Barbie, I'm a boy. Why doesn't he want a Barbie? He really likes Lego and building robots and fishing. Fishing? He, oh my god, he loves fishing. Like, if I bought him a box of rubber worms, he'd be so excited. You need to find somebody to build him a Barbie robot. Just blow his little mind. He keeps wanting to robotize Hibernian Hippo. He wants to, like, make my big green hippo a robot thing. I, I'm still just... I, I really don't want him to see Big Hero 6, because I'm afraid of what will happen to my hippo. You're... You obviously, if you're buying a Barbie, presumably you have children. These people have children. They're raising another human being. Yes. And their priorities are a fist fight over a Barbie doll. Mm -hmm. That's the example they're setting. Yes, baby. Uh-oh, what happened? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. My browser has crashed. Oh no. Oh no. What happened? Why you do this? Let's try reopening it. Oh, baby. oh there he goes. It crashed, but guess what? Everything read the fuck open. Yes. All right. So let's move along. You were mentioning this earlier, and yeah, this is. Sadly enough, this is no longer an American phenomena. We no. have we've 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 made it worse because uh, we've gone international. 
we have indeed gone international because it spread. It has spread. And I've been to Tesco. Tesco is sort of like a wannabe Walmart because it's it's mostly a grocery store that finally thought, oh, maybe we should do like sell other shit. And I don't think they were quite prepared for the whole Black Friday thing. Police were called to a number of supermarkets in the UK overnight amid fears of crowd surges as stores opened their doors to hundreds of customers on one of the biggest <laughs> shopping days. Yeah, here we go. Here's the video. You can see. It's like, it is the running of the bulls. It's like, on your mark, get set, get the fuck, go. This is in fucking England. They don't even do Thanksgiving there. They don't even have Thanksgiving. That's it, yeah. They don't celebrate it. They didn't have no Mayflower, no pilgrims, no shit like that. Well, they had pilgrims. The pilgrims left and came here. Yeah. Okay, okay, I'm trying, okay. Holy Christ, look at this shit. Please stop panicking. There we this go. This is fucking hardcore. Oh, I know. Yes, you can bite me now. Must have TV. Police recall the four supermarkets in London as people gather at Tesco stores in Edmonton, Williston, and Surrey's Quar uh, Surrey's K, uh, and an Asda and Capital Way Edgeware. Uh, South do, do you wonder if people who make zombie movies use this shit as reference? Holy! Oh my God! There's a. They are. They are fighting over that shit. Holy! Let it go! And there's even more. Oh my God! It just keeps going. South Wales police also reported receiving a number of calls from staff at Tesco stores after they became quote concerned due to the volume of the people who had turned up to sales events. Yeah, the Tesco had never seen this before. They weren't prepared for this shit. It's like, we're we're old hands over here. We're, we're fully aware that it's going to be a nightmare. But them, these were like green rookies. They didn't they sign no up for this. No. They, they they just wanted, you know, to sell mediocre housewares and, and, and produce. They, they, they didn't know. They didn't know. And I don't get why this is a thing overseas because I don't know. The shit you were taking that those TVs they were getting, it's even worse. They're not even that good. But they're ten dollars less. You can find a better TV for the same sale price on Amazon, I promise you. I researched the fuck out of my TV. I got a super fucking deal on my TV. Because I just, I didn't even do a Black Friday or nothing. I just researched the shit and like, bam, I got my shit. Yeah. <sighs> I was lucky this year. I was working Black Friday in a store that was actually exceptionally quiet. I was in an outdoor mall and it was really, really cold here. So people were just like, fuck this. We're going to the indoor mall. But like, I've worked a lot of Black Fridays and it is scary. When I used to work at the Old Navy... I had to be there at 6.30 in the morning and people were fucking lined up and tried to force their way in with the employees. And we're like, no, we don't know what you think you're going to do. We don't have any of the registers open. The lights aren't on. Like, we must, must get, must. Ah, ah, ah. Even if you get inside the store, we ain't selling you shit for at least half an hour. So, but it's just, it's like a fucking zombie movie. Like they just well, let's stay in England because we have another uh, issue. Okay, I I miss recess. Recess is one of the best things when I was a kid. You, you know, even as an we're adult, we're starting to cut back on it. Like a lot of schools are doing away with it, and that's why doing, our kids are going fucking insane. Doing away with, yeah. Because they need more time for math. And I'm like, no, they're little kids. They need to run the fuck around. Like, you can't make them sit still for eight hours. They will lose their little tiny minds. But, and you know what? It had this been, had this happened to me, this would have effectively been the best recess ever. And I'm pretty sure the kids were decided this was the best recess ever. But the, the, uh, the, the teachers, probably a little bit less so. Um... Charter Infant School, that's their kindergarten, um, playground evacuated during break time after unusually aggressive oh, no. gray squirrel threatened children. Oh, no. 
School children were forced to evacuate a playground after a rampant squirrel caused havoc. I'm sorry. That is, that is, I love, this is one of the few things I love about doing this. I get to say stuff like a rampant squirrel caused havoc and it's serious and shit. Kind of like the scene from National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Squirrel! A teacher Everybody at a, freak the fuck out. A teacher at Charter Infant School in Watford, Hertfordshire, uh, had herd the youngsters back into the safety of the building after a, quote, unusually aggressive gray squirrel disrupted their afternoon playtime. One member of the staff was even scratched, <gasps> uh, but no children were hurt. Um, I mean, God knows what kind of disease the wild squirrel is carrying, so obviously you don't want any of the kids getting bit and... I got. I yeah. gotta wonder what that squirrel was thinking, though. Well, that squirrel was clearly a rage zombie, or just thinking this was the most hilarious shit ever. <laughs> Look at the humans run! Fear me! <laughs> yeah, you know what? Probably the squirrel just sort of like went a little uh, up to a human, and they went, "Oh God!" And the squirrel's like. Wait a second. It's like, kneel before squeaky. <laughs> squirrel drunk on power. Uh, and you know that the, while the, the teachers were like losing their shit, the kids were like, holy crap, this is awesome! Look at a squirrel! This is the best thing! Dan just PM'd me. I now regret telling you that story about the time I got bit by a squirrel. <laughs> Don't worry. I won't share with them the details of your terrifying squirrel injury. Maybe the squirrel was just trying to sleep and was tired of this shit every day. Same time, every day. Every day, at the same time. Little you little... Are making noise. Little... Get off my lawn! Yeah, yeah, it's a little get off my lawn squirrel. Ah, but we have, we have other wildlife issues. Um, okay. I... <laughs> what? Just, we have other wildlife issues. We do. We do. Actually, this... That's, that's a big old understatement on this show. The home of Hemingway Bear. Uh, so I, I understand the purpose of uh, care animals. They are especially the emotional support animals. Yeah, I get that. You, you know the story is coming. You know the story is coming. I get that. I understand there's a need for it when it's and people have like you know little cats and dogs. They have them registered. and They can take them places they can't take other animals, like you know into stores and other places because you know they're they're service animals. Like I'm allowed to take Bridget to work because she's the only thing that keeps me from killing people. Exactly. However, I think this taking the shit a bit too far. Come on, load it up. Um, this comes to us. Uh, for a dis super pig, super pig. Disruptive. Super pig does. Can he fly? No, he can't. He's a pig. I know it's the super pig, but it's the spider. What else? Spider. Disrupted pig kicked off U.S. Airways flight. And you know, this comes to the Associated Press, so there's no byline, but whoever wrote this was waiting for this. Their whole life. The first line of the story, this was a pig that truly could not fly. The pig was ordered off a U.S. Airways plane at Bradley International Airport in Connecticut on Wednesday after crew members determined the animal had become disruptive. The pig had been brought on the flight by a passenger as an emotional support animal. She said both the pig and its owner left the aircraft before it took off. It was... It, uh... Jonathan Skolnick, a University of Massachusetts professor who was on the flight, said he initially thought the female passenger was carrying a duffel bag... He then smelled a stench. It, it's no duffel bag, but rather a stout pig on a leash, she said in an associated uh, email sent to the Associated Press. Quote, am I dreaming? Which, you know, I would think that too for a second. That's one of those moments where you have to go, wait, did I just go crazy? How many fucking whiskey sours did I have at that airport bar? But the problem was not the fact that it was a pig. Here's wait, the there's more. Here's what caused the problem. The pig was incontinent. All right. If 
the service animal is necessary for you to go places, and if said service animal will piss anywhere, anyhow, anytime, maybe you should invest in some rubber sheets and rent a car. Or, you know, little pig diapers. Pig diapers, yes. Not flying. This is not... you. See, you knew the pig was going to... How did that get through security? <laughs> well, you have papers for them. The service animals, you have papers. It's pretty much, I can do this. Yeah, see, many people are going to be pissed at me for this, but people have taken this shit too far. Like, I'm sorry. I know service animals are a wonderful thing. They serve a purpose. But there are right. people that just want to be able to take their pets everywhere. Yes. That get them fucking registered. Yes. That, oh, I need it for emotional support. No. Because I can't possibly leave my teacup chihuahua at home for two hours because I bought a special Louis Vuitton bag for it. And that's just... We used to have this chick that would come into the Sephora with her stupid dog and you weren't allowed to have animals in the mall, but she claimed it was a service animal, which basically meant she never had to prove it. People just have to claim it and you have to get off their back. Some guy in the channel says, goes wee 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 all the way home. <laughs> and this dog would bark its full head off and like run around the store and disrupt people and drool. We couldn't do anything about it because she was like, it's a service animal. And we're like, really? It's really, really poorly behaved for a fucking service animal. Yeah, they're supposed to have like... They're generally trained. Yeah, they have supposed to have like regulations and they're supposed yeah. to meet criteria. And while pigs are very intelligent and they can be pets, Again, if it's just going to poop on stuff, that's not the kind of service you need provided. You... Well, and that's, like, fine. Maybe, like, it, obviously, if it got to the TSA, she had the paperwork. Because they're not just going to let you bring your pet on a flight. Like, in a mall, you kind of have to put up with some shit. The TSA doesn't have to put up with anything. So, clearly, she had paperwork for it. But, like... You gotta put that pig in a diaper. People do it. Yeah. I have a friend who has to put her dog in diapers when she goes out because the dog gets excited and pees. Part of pet ownership. I know people like that. So. Anyway. More from California tonight. They keep escalating this. This keep all right, this is one of those things, again, that's becoming like a running theme. This shit keeps happening. And every time it happens, there's just, like, a new layer added. Remember the guy who stole the ambulance? Which one? Exactly! Well, this is one of those, oh yeah, I can make shit worse. Oakley County Sheriff's Office says man stole ambulance to go to Topless Bar. <laughs> Oakland County Sheriff's Office say a 51-year-old man stole an ambulance on Sunday to drive to a topless bar. The Pontiac man is in custody, expected to face auto theft charges, uh, for taking uh, the Star EMS ambulance that was sitting outside of McLaurin Hospital. We're told attendants were taking a patient into the emergency room around 11 when the man hopped in and took off in the vehicle. The keys were apparently still inside. We can only pray he didn't know how to use the defib panels. One of the workers were able to track the ambulance and police located the vehicle near... Uh, yeah. Spoiler alert, guys. Those things have a fucking GPS locator in them. The they will find you. The sheriff's office said the, man's, the man said he was headed to <laughs> the Booby Trap Bar. It's the best name ever. The Booby Trap <laughs> Bar. Oh, DA Scott, wham bam, is, thank you, ambulance. Nice. That is the best name for a strip bar I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> it's the Booby Trap. Because of course it is. I mean, isn't that really what all strip, strip clubs are? Booby yeah, Traps. Yeah, kind of. I'm just, my God. Will you just walk along and see the ambulance and go, you know what? I ain't seen titties in a while. 
Two birds, one stone. I could get there really fast with these fancy, with these fancy roof lights. I know. How bad do you need to see nipples? <laughs> Would you have to flip on the side? Get the fuck out the way! <laughs> That's not what they're there for. It's not a share a ride. No, they're not a zip car. It's not a zip car. And here's the darker. And the strippers don't want the drugs in there. Here, here's, here's, here's the dark side of this. You might have killed somebody. If you steal an ambulance. Yeah. You might have killed somebody. Those serve a very specific purpose. You might have killed. You know, I don't care how amazing the tits are. No tits are worth murder. Channel. What say you? Can tits be worth murder? I think that this is kind of one of those Grand Theft Auto things. Because once you play that game, it just changes your person. Did I tell you about when I saw the armored car? No. It's at Walmart the other day. Uh, Do not fuck with those guys. They will shoot the shit out of you. Me and Allison were at Walmart the other day. And I, I a, this is like a holdover. I was playing Watch Dogs a while back. It's like a GTA game. And in Watch Dogs the most badass vehicle you can get. It's slow as shit, but if you steal an armored car, you can go through anything. And I saw that armored car, and I'm like, you know, do I have any missions right? Wait a minute. They will shoot the fuck out of you. Hello, baby. I, it, 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 it changed. It sounds like... car dudes do not fuck around. Like, they are trained. They will protect that money. They will kill your ass. It's, it's not like, you know, they cause violence, but I do think video games change your perception just a wee bit. That's all I'm saying. Our last one tonight, we're going back to Florida because, you know, got to stick with our roots. Um, This is another, and this is yet another one. This is, this is yet another instance of upping the ante. I... Florida man accused making meth in public bathroom. Again? New Smyrna Beach. Authorities say a 20-year-old man is accused of trying to set up a meth lab in a restroom at a park in New Smyrna Beach. Daytona Beach News Journal reports a construction worker called 911 on Tuesday <laughs> to report smoke that smelled of chemicals and acid coming out of the men's bathroom. Police say a hazardous material team went to the park to investigate. Inside the bathroom, they found remnants of a one-pot meth lab. The restroom wasn't seriously damaged. Work told police he saw a man running from the area with a bag in his hand. Evidence led investigators to Justin Hill. He's also a suspect in a home burglary. I still don't understand the one pot. Like, I watch Breaking Bad, and the process seems pretty fucking elaborate. Well, no, that's... That is... This, like, in their purse. See, that's Walt doing it properly such a thing exists that's walt attempting to do it like professionally even like semi-pro the the way it's done otherwise you have to watch the first episode of breaking bad and you see that shitty ass meth lab that they took walter for the ride along on that's where he got the idea yeah but even that was at jesse's house and took up a lot of space like we were covering people doing this in their fucking purse. Well, no, people don't have standards anymore, man. But how is it even possible? I don't understand. Like, I, I don't understand how it can be done. And this is one of the, you know, if it had been me, God help me. But if it had been me, my, I would have just casually gone out, walked out of the bathroom, and go, nobody go in there for about 45, 50 minutes. May want to light a match. That's no. all I'm saying. <laughs> No. I would just been like, "Woo!" Does not meth explode? You do not want to light a match. Man, Taco Bell, am I right, people? Woo! <laughs> but that's serious. To do that in a public restaurant, that is some seriously caustic, toxic shit. It's not safe. And I, I hate the, 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 the fact that these guys are complete imbeciles doing it. 
they think they put on like one of those breath light those those breath masks for like painting and shit. They'll be yeah. fine. No. No. Uh. Uh-uh. That is not safe. And how do you have nowhere else to do this but the public bathroom of the park? Like, how is that your best option? Well, you're on meth, is is the answer to that question. Oh, right. You're on meth. How is the public bathroom your best? You're on meth! That's how it's your best. Ta-da! And if there's one thing we learned about meth, is that it seriously inhibits your ability to make decisions. Or to have teeth. Okay. It does do terrible things to your skin. It does terrible things to your everything. Yeah, I, I still don't understand meth as a drug. All right. Do we really? We, I, I, wanted to, I don't want to do this last one that you sent me. I don't. Yeah, you do. No, I don't. Yeah, you do. All right. This is ki- send your kids out of the room. Dude, why are your kids watching this show? Send your kids to fucking Child Protective Services if you're not watching the show. I was watching last week's episode and my nephew came in to say goodnight and he's like watching the screen because he's always wanted to see the show and I'm like, this is not appropriate for you, get out! Because I was right about to make the 100 Acre Wood joke. I was like, get out! This is not a show for you! And he's like, but I want to see your show! And I'm like, no. Folks, if you do not have a strong stomach, just mute the stream for a little bit. This is officially the worst thing ever. It's pretty bad. This is, this is, we found it. This is the work, this. Even Bridget has stopped purring in anticipation. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, I, I will let the headline speak for itself. So, so here we go. I... This is past. No, no, no! Don't say clench. This is past clench. This, this is this shit has this shit goes to eleven. Just let me put it up on the screen, and uh, I'll I'll let that I'll I'll just let that sink in. <clears throat> let it marinate. This is the thing that happened, people. This is the thing that happened. And what's funny is, it was by accident. The boiling. This was apparently some kind of project that he had a My Little Pony in a jar and was collecting his juices in that jar with the pony for whatever reason. This was art. Or something, I don't know. Maybe it was science. And then he accidentally left it on the heater and got pony spooge soup. There's a picture if you guys really want to see. Oh, there is. I don't think this is in that semen cookbook. You know there's a semen cookbook, right? Yeah, it's called Natural Harvest. It's available at barnesandnoble.com and it's all recipes involving semen. The write-up is great. It's like it's nutritious and readily available within minutes and yet it's still underused as a food source. Tara. And the cover image on the book is flan and I'm like, why you gotta ruin flan? Tara, stop. Just, just. Like, I love me some flan. I'm probably not Uh. eating this food flan. Oh, please stop. I just want to know why. I want to know what the point of this project was. Internet. But what, what, what is the purpose of drowning a My Little Pony in your own semen? What's your motivation? Internet. So what what were you going to do with it when it was done? So what have we learned this week, kids? (laughs) 
We've learned if you have to make meth, if you must make meth, do it at home. Or not at all. But if you must, it's not a it's it's not a picnic. Which is the worst hobby? Making meth at home? Or making horse cum stew at home? Which would make you angrier at your roommate? We've learned this week there is no such thing as a titty emergency. But there is a booby trap. There is a booby trap. Learn that if you have to take your service animal with you, a diaper, bare minimum. Bare, especially if, if you know it's going to poop. Yeah. But just... If you know your service animal is little incontinent. We've learned that sometimes a squirrel just can't take it no more. I'm as mad as hell. I'm not going to take, take this anymore. And finally, we've learned Black Friday is never. Too many cocks. <laughs> oh. <laughs> finally, we've learned Black Friday is just never worth it. It's a really wonderful microcosm of all of the worst of humanity. Like this show. Okay, there are a type of furry called hoofers. They like My Little Pony character sexually. La 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 Ah! It's an important lesson. Ah! So they're not hoofers, they're cloppers. No, 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 no. There's more than one term. Fuck you, internet! <laughs>